A warm greeting? Today is Saturday, August 10, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. With this video, I will begin a special coverage related to the newly designated Invest 98, which is the tropical wave we have been monitoring for several days, and which has a high probability of becoming a tropical storm just before reaching the northeastern Caribbean between Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. It is important for residents of the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic to remain very attentive to the evolution of this low-pressure system, as the projections continue with good consensus that it should pass near or over the northeastern Caribbean, affecting weather conditions. So, in this video, I will be providing details on the latest updates from specialized models regarding the track and intensity, and we will also discuss the potential effects this future cyclone could have in terms of rain and wind across the northeastern Caribbean. Last night, we saw how Invest 98 continues to generate strong thunderstorms over the wave's axis, and we are beginning to see signs of cyclonic development. This is why the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of developing a tropical depression to 80% as it moves west-northwest. Additionally, they also increased the probability of development to 30% over the next 48 hours. Thus, the National Hurricane Center agrees that this disturbance is organizing throughout today, and now that it has been designated as Invest 98, we have projections from specialized models. Let's start with the track projections. You can see that the first projection continues to indicate that over the next three days and at least until Monday, this tropical wave will maintain a generally west-northwest track, and there is very little uncertainty in its track over the next three days. However, starting Monday, we see a divergence among the possible scenarios, with some models showing a more northwesterly track passing over the northern Lesser Antilles and towards the northeastern part of Puerto Rico, while others show a more westerly track that could eventually lead this future cyclone to cross over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Therefore, at this point we cannot accurately predict how close or far it will pass, for example, from Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, but we are confident that the circulation center will pass within approximately 100 miles or less of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Additionally, the Dominican Republic and Haiti are still under threat, although it is currently projected to remain slightly to the right of that region. However, the GFS model continues to project that a hurricane could reach Dominican territory, which is why everyone in the northeastern Caribbean, from the Lesser Antilles to Haiti, should continue to be vigilant about the future tropical storm Ernesto. We can clearly see these different scenarios in the ensemble members of the GFS model, where most of them have a tropical storm affecting the northern lesser. Antilles during the morning hours of Tuesday and then passing very close to or over the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico during the night of Tuesday and the early hours of Wednesday. Although this seems to be the most likely scenario, with a bit of luck and if it strengthens more than anticipated, it could take a more northwesterly turn passing about 100 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. However, we cannot rule out the possibility that it could move further west and directly affect the Dominican Republic. This more southerly track, passing south of Puerto Rico and over the Dominican Republic, currently represents the worst-case scenario, as a track through this region would bring the strongest effects over the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, something very similar to what we saw with Hurricane Fiona, where a southerly track left the system's strongest part over Puerto Rico. However, if the circulation center remains over or just northeast of the island, the strongest winds and rains would remain over the Atlantic waters. Again, I emphasize that a track just south of Puerto Rico brings the worst effects to the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and eventually also to the Dominican Republic. On the other hand, the ensemble members of the European model mostly have a tropical depression or tropical storm crossing over the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico between next Tuesday and Wednesday, and perhaps passing just northeast of the Dominican Republic. Again, note that some members have a track just northeast of Puerto Rico, which represents the best scenario for the northeastern Caribbean, except for the northern Lesser Antilles, where a direct impact seems assured. In terms of intensity, as we had projected, the models continue to project that it would arrive in the Caribbean Sea as a moderate or strong tropical storm. However, some models project that it could even strengthen into a hurricane, and although it currently seems that the most likely scenario is that it will pass through the region as a tropical storm, we definitely cannot rule out that it may strengthen more than anticipated and arrive as a Category 1 hurricane. Let's look at the projections from the global models, but before that, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video. Click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell to receive notifications when I record new videos. Let's start by looking at the projection of the American GFS model. Notice that during tomorrow night Sunday, it already has a fairly strong low pressure, and by Monday morning, it develops a tropical depression east of the Lesser Antilles. Then, during the morning of Tuesday, it has a strong tropical storm moving over the northern Lesser Antilles and maintaining a more westerly track, passing just south of Puerto Rico and over the Dominican Republic 
possibly as a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane. Although this is a possible scenario, the consensus is that it would pass as a tropical storm, although the GFS model is currently the most aggressive in terms of intensity. Regarding the track, the GFS model has been very consistent in maintaining this trajectory, so it is definitely a likely scenario for early next week. Then, in the long term, the GFS model has potentially Hurricane Ernesto affecting the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, before eventually moving north-northeast and approaching Bermuda dangerously. On the other hand, let's look at the projection of the European model. It takes longer to develop a tropical depression, but it develops it just before entering the Lesser Antilles during the early hours of Tuesday, and maintains a track over the islands of the northern Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, and over or just northeast of Puerto Rico as a tropical storm. Like the GFS model, it projects that the center of circulation would pass through this region during Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. In the medium and long term, it remains northeast of the Dominican Republic which would represent the best scenario for the Dominican Republic, because the strongest effects would remain over the Atlantic. In the long term, like the GFS model, with a north-northeast trajectory, it strengthens into a dangerous hurricane and passes very close to Bermuda in about seven days. Furthermore, the consensus with the other global models continues. Here we have the projection of the German model, which has a tropical storm passing over the northeastern Caribbean and affecting Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands during the early hours of Wednesday. Also, the UK model has a tropical depression or tropical storm passing over the northeastern Caribbean. Once again, as I have explained in recent days, we have a very good consensus that the track will be over the northeastern Caribbean. It remains to be seen exactly where that center of circulation will pass. In general, we have two scenarios one in which it would pass very close to or over Puerto Rico between Tuesday and Wednesday, and the other in which it would remain more to the south over Caribbean waters, eventually reaching the Dominican Republic. Now, let's look at the different effects that will be felt under these two scenarios. I can tell you that a track over Caribbean waters would be the worst-case scenario, as we will see in the next few minutes. Let's start with the projection of the American model in terms of wind gusts. Remember that the GFS model has a track just south of Puerto Rico. In this case, the GFS model has a Category 1 hurricane moving over the Lesser Antilles and south of Puerto Rico, leaving the strongest winds over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, with some hurricane force wind gusts that could affect the region. Then, during Wednesday night and Thursday morning, it crosses over the Dominican Republic. Under this scenario, notice that the highest rainfall accumulations would be very close to or over Puerto Rico, with between 8 to 10 inches of rain, while the islands of the Lesser Antilles could receive between 100 and 200 millimeters, and the Dominican Republic could receive over 300 millimeters during the next five days. Once again, remember that this would be the scenario in which the center of circulation enters the Caribbean Sea. However, if the other scenario occurs, in which it would pass just northeast of Puerto Rico as indicated by the European model, the strongest winds would remain over Atlantic waters, although some tropical storm force winds could affect the islands of the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. In this scenario, Notice that the maximum rainfall accumulations would be over Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the islands of the northern Lesser Antilles, with between 48 inches of rain in a 48-hour period. So, there is a high risk of flooding in all these areas, and at the moment, rain is our main concern due to the flooding it can cause across the northeastern Caribbean. In millimeters, we are talking about between 100 to 150 millimeters of accumulated rain. So, in conclusion, you can see that the chances of development continue to increase while the chances of a direct impact also remain very high, due to the high consensus among the track models. There is definitely still uncertainty about how strong it could be when passing through this region, but regardless of its track and intensity, it is projected that between Monday and Wednesday, heavy downpours and flooding will be recorded across the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Please continue to pay attention to the official bulletins from the National Hurricane Center. Well, that's it for now. I will record a new video to update you on the latest model projections during the afternoon or evening. I hope everyone has an excellent day.